I think the Chinese economy is weakening somewhat, um, but the Chinese also understand that they have to make some kind of arrangement with the U.S. The question is how many concessions and how extensive the concessions will be. And President Xi Jinping has made it very clear the Chinese are not going to change the okay, fundamentals. So what do you think is fundamentally system. on the table? I think what's on the table, essentially, the Chinese will buy more American goods. They've already indicated they buy right. more soybeans, more natural gas. They'll buy other things as well. Second, they've already begun to open their markets further. They've cut a lot of tariffs. They'll open their markets more to American goods. Just to American goods or everyone? Or foreign goods in general, but they're going to be focusing on, on yep. the U.S., at least for the moment, for obvious negotiating reasons. Mm -hmm. And third, the Chinese do understand that they have to protect intellectual property, both their own because they're developing a lot of innovation on their own domestically. Their people want it protected. And, of course, this is one of the big issues with the United States. So those are the areas where I think progress actually and when do you think that gets made? And by the way, on intellectual property, they've been talking that game for, for a decade, if not more, and have not uh, walked the walk. Yes, they, th th this is a longstanding, virtually all the issues we have with China are longstanding issues. They've been discussed for a decade, as you point out. But the area of intellectual property is a, a little bit different in as much as 10 years ago, they really didn't develop much of their own. Now I went to Shenzhen, which is their Silicon Valley. They've got a lot of people who want their intellectual property protected. And the government has established two courts just for protection right. of intellectual property. And they're actually moving ahead because of Who has they more leverage more over investment. the other right now? Meaning Trump or Xi? I would say at the moment, based uh, on these, these, if you'd these trips me, of yours. If you'd asked me two or three weeks ago, I would have said the United States had more uh, leverage over China because their economy was weakening a bit, our economy was looking good, and our market was looking good. The decline in the stock market, which in part is caused by this disruption in relations with China, perhaps convinces the Chinese that they have a little bit more leverage than they had thought they had even a couple of weeks ago. So you're not in the house, in the camp of people that thinks the Chinese economy is actually a lot weaker than perhaps the numbers suggest, and, and they're already turning on the liquidity taps, and yet still it's not supporting the economy. Well, it, it is certainly weaker than it was, say, a year ago or six months ago, and they are, in fact, moving from a policy of deleveraging, which they were mm -hmm. undertaking, because they do have a lot of leverage. They're now trying to stimulate the economy somewhat with more monetary policy and giving the banks more extensive room to make loans, particularly to small and medium-sized enterprises. So I think they are feeling pressure the question is how much they're going to give in terms of major concessions to alleviate that pressure. The, and that's being negotiated right now. The policy of deleveraging, they needed to do major reforms within the financial sector there because there was so much going on in the shadow banking system. Right. You remember the massive protests in August? Right. They arrested all the these people. The so-called PNP who, issues. Yeah, the, the exactly. PNP, exactly. Right. Um, that was a necessary but painful thing for them to do, right? Yes. Are they going to start undoing that because of what's happening? That, it's this push and pull they constantly yeah. have. That is one of the problems they have. They don't want the economy to weaken too much. The PNP thing, these are peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer -to -peer lending People which, can't we get really good interest uh, rates at banks, so they go out and they do this other A lot of, of companies were established. They were not well regulated. Now a lot of them have gone bankrupt or are being more there was a lot uh, of fraud, seriously et regulated. So on some of the reforms, they're actually keeping it up. And they've also given the signal that banks should lend more to private sector companies since they are, in fact, big generators of job creation. We're talking about this debate between the U.S. and China as one about these very specific items, if you will. Yes. But there's a larger sort of philosophical issue at play, which is, do you think the U.S. is now looking at this uh, uh, relationship as one that used to be of collaboration, if you think it was that, I don't know if you think it ever was that, to now of one of containment. Well, and, this and, is... And, and given what President Xi has said about what his 2025 plan and what he plans to do, whether that was meant internally or not, it doesn't matter, it effectively says we want to basically be running the world when this is all done. This is the fundamental change in the relationship, and that is that before it was a relationship between a very high-tech economy, the U.S., and an economy which was really focused on labor-intensive production, China. Now the big difference is that China is advancing dramatically in these new advanced 21st century technologies and competing with the U.S. The first time we've really had 
an across-the-board right. kind of competition of this sort, which makes it very different from competing with Canada well, on dairy products or other things. This is very different. And, and the feeling is, in Washington, there are two schools of thought. One is the containment school. Contain the rise in China's growth. Do you think that's growth. possible? No. Um, contain the rise in China's growth, and particularly in its growth in advanced technology, because A, makes them more competitive economically, and B, a lot of these have potentially strategic uh, significant elements to them. The second is to try to at least get a more level playing field, which is to say more level playing field with respect to state enterprises, but how much intellectual of this property, comes things down of that to Xi Jinping sort. himself. You know, China under Hu Jintao and some of its previous leaders looked very different. And the, the way he's acted in power and consolidated his power and the plans that he's made. So is there, does the U.S. just have to wait it out with him and hope that maybe there's some, and, and how long are we talking and how much damage could be done in the meantime? Well, I think, I think that this, that he certainly is at the pinnacle of the system, but the system is, is broader than Xi Jinping. I mean, there, there are a number of people, it's a more participatory system but it's more on economic issues. But the, the, I think the, the negotiations that are underway are underway with serious people on the Chinese side who know the system well and know how to negotiate with the United States. He is not going to change his goal of advancing China's technological capability to be more competitive in many areas, AI, quantum computing, autonomous vehicles, a whole range but of things. This is China's future. It has to be. And is there somebody who could come into that office? and be more liberal, be more open to reform. He'll be, be more... there for a long time. We're yeah. going <laughs> to have to work with him and the people around him. But he knows a lot about economic issues. I've met with him on numerous occasions. He knows a lot. He was actually one of the earlier proponents of getting more foreign investment into China. He understands this. Is, is he genuinely as strong as ever as well? Or, or there have been some rumors in the last six months that people want to try and oust him domestically? I, yeah, I've heard those rumors, and I think they're entirely false. I think that he is still in a very strong position. The nature of the Chinese government is that the president, particularly this president, is the key guy, and nothing happens without him. He does have a lot of people around him who he works with, who he's worked with for a number of years. So I don't think this question of waiting it out is, okay. is a real one. We're going to have to deal with him. And, and he but, has okay, people who can negotiate. Okay, but to that point, to re-ask Kelly's question, do, before we ever see any real change between this relationship, does he have to be gone? No, he will, he will he, first of all, he's going to stay. There's That's not no what I'm asking. There's I'm no real threat real... to them. And then the, 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 the answer to your question is, change can take place in the relationship under him and under the people who work for him. He is going to be a person who understands the reality of the situation, which is that while he talks tough and he's not going to make major concessions about the Chinese system, he is also someone who can negotiate and has credibility to negotiate changes that will accommodate us to a degree on intellectual property, perhaps a more level, level playing field on state enterprises. He can make changes and he's going to be the one we're going to have to deal with. We don't have to wait him out. He actually, I think, is pragmatic enough that at some point we can, we can make a deal. But it's right. not going to be one-sided so that he gives everything and we give nothing. It's going to be a negotiation. Chinese don't negotiate in a lopsided way.